The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report with Dom and Charles. Hello, Charles. Now, as you may recall, on the weekend, Mm. Australia went to the polls. Oh, really? We did. There was a referendum. It was just a small matter. Not to anyone directly affected by the massive gap between Indigenous Australia and everyone else. No, for them it was a fairly large matter. It was a fairly big deal. In Mm. in many ways, everything, some might say. For those who went and voted, though, a mere inconvenience that ended up with 60% of Australians voting no. But one of the mysteries, and there are many mysteries at this point, Charles, is why did the Yes campaign unfold in the particular way that it did. Why didn't its message manage to connect with Heartland Australia? It's very clear that the further you were away from the inner city, the more likely you were to vote no. And why were Crosby Texter, the group that's been incredibly closely tied to the Liberals for many, many years, well, and yes. also the Conservatives in the UK, just yes. as tightly with Boris Johnson and Scott Morrison in particular. Stop the boats. Why were they Stop the boats. put in charge of the Yes campaign? <laughs> I'm going to try and figure that out after this. So I don't know why <laughs> well, Crosby well, Texter I, got the gig. Can I just start by suggesting one reason, which is that they've been enormously effective in stoking racially based campaigns in the UK. And here too. Well, and here too, yeah. Like they're the flavour of the month, not just in the UK, but throughout you know the European Union. They're bringing Howard-style anti-refugee rhetoric to the world. I mean, literally, they're not even rewriting the messages, right? No. They stop the Votes is the slogan in the UK with Rishi Sunak at the and, moment. And the EU commissioner said, we decide who comes into the country in the terms in which they, or into our continent or whatever, and the terms in which they come. Like literally stealing that line from John Howard. And the, I mean, you've got Suella Braverman in the UK, who I think is the Home Secretary, who is the, the daughter of two migrants to Britain mm. coming out and campaigning against further immigration. It's quite a bizarre situation. But the thing is, Crosby Text, if you look back at their history, they've been so incredibly successful. I can only assume someone thought, look, these people are the ultimate Svengalis. They understand how Middle Australia thinks they'll get it done. So why did they do it? I mean, my understanding is that they thought it was time to kind of give something back. Right. Okay. What they've given back is a, a massive defeat, mm. it would seem. This was yeah. a thing. It was meant to be sort of a passion project, right? A passion project to, what, make the Yes campaign lose. <laughs> like it, it was it some sort of Machiavellian figures who are clearly aligned with the no side and get them in on the basis that they'd be acting in good faith? Is that the idea? What? It, it like, is what? extremely it make strange. Any sense. What I don't know in particular is why Anthony Albanese signed off on this because the Yes campaign was separate to Labor. Mm. It was meant to be bipartisan. Mm. And my my theory is that they thought, oh. if we get Crosby Texter, yes. we'll be able to get the Liberals on well, board. Yes, and that actually squares away with something I heard, which was apparently Noel Pearson was sort of going, oh, these these guys are all... And he, I think Noel Pearson has been a very sort of broad church style yeah. leader, wanting to bring the Libs into the fold. Well, presumably he recalled that yeah. no uh, referendum that wasn't bipartisan has yeah. ever succeeded. So that, that does actually have some logic to it, but what about when Dutton then said, no... Maybe they'd signed the contract by that point. They'd already signed I, the contract, yes. And you locked in for 18 months... Like, it's some sort of mobile phone contract. Oh, fuck, I've got the Texter plan. Apparently it was Crosby Texter's idea to focus on constitutional recognition because their research showed that it was more widely supported and easily understood than the voice advisory body. Some might have said, well, you'd better explain what the voice advisory body is or no is going to run on you don't understand it. But yeah. instead they went, oh, let's talk about the constitutional recognition. So clearly a major miscalculation by Crosby Texter. So is it that maybe, because I've got another solution, that it's not that he intentionally scuttled the Yes campaign. Oh, yeah. It's that he suddenly, after years and years of being incredibly competent at what he is doing, has hmm. suddenly become incredibly incompetent. Well, this is what's I, being asked I at think, the moment, is yeah. have they lost their touch? Yes, because there's no, I mean, it wouldn't just be that they intentionally Intentionally, we're incompetent. Are you, are you are you suggesting that they tanked it on purpose? That there's an inside job? I mean, I don't know what I'm suggesting. Well, can, can I just have a look? It's so well can, played. Can we please? Yeah, I know, very well played. But can we just please look at what they're quote unquote successful at? Because what they're not quote unquote have it never been successful at is actually progressing humankind in the correct oh, direction. No, they don't do progressive, Charles. That's, no, that may be the mismatch. It, well, let's take a little bit of a look at the history of Crosby Texter because I mean they've been massively successful. Mm. If success is the only criteria. 
and they're brilliant. And now, now there's a whole series on their influence um, that ran in Crikey in kind of May and June. Mm. It's well worth getting into, and I'm just going to completely rip it off by talking about what they did. John Howard was the leader who kind of first rose along with Crosby Texter. They crafted many of his major wins, mm. and that's where they really made uh, a name for themselves. Now, Linton Crosby ran for the Libs in South Australia in 1982 mm. and flopped. His first job out of university, by the way, guess which industry he worked in? Oh, uh, it'll be fossil fuels. Yeah, petroleum. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he worked for Santos. He worked for Caltex. Yes. And then having, uh, of course, the expertise in fossil fuels is the perfect way to then become director of the Federal Liberal Party. Yes. He was there 97 to 2002. So he was very much involved in... in um, the head office to get John Howard elected. He was seconded. And then he stopped, the he went party. on for 2002 on. Yeah. He went on to start his own company, he sort of spun off and went from, yeah. from there. Why didn't he get with somebody called Steels and somebody called Nash so that he could be <laughs> Crosby, Steels and Nash? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but then Mark Texter was from, what was Mark Texter? He was doing? a pollster yeah. from the Northern Territory, would you believe? Known as Tex. I think Crosby was strategy, Texter was the polling guy. Right. And this is the thing they were always really good at, was knowing which messages were going to resonate. That's sort of the dark art side of things. Mm. But these days, it's called CT Group now. It's got offices in London, Washington, Dubai, Hong Kong, mm. and Mumbai, right? right? So they're absolutely global. And their latest big trick, the latest industry that they've sort of moved into alongside it, is intelligence. I, I was going to say, I bet you it's AI. Yeah, no, no, it's not. It's not AI. It's oh, actual it's not, oh, spy intelli- intelligence. Oh, right. They've uh, worked together oh, with the my. former spy chiefs of France and Germany. Yeah. So what you're saying is a spy firm. Might have done something, you know, were completely, you know, upfront about their intentions of joining the Yes campaign, Don. I'm going to tell what you're you, saying? what I'm going to tell you after this. An, an industry based in duplicity, but they weren't duplicitous. It wasn't, the, this was their one that they were going to do for good. Yeah. This is the one yeah, time. The one time. All right. I'm going to tell you about their involvement in the Morrison government after this because oh, they were great. right, right up in the middle of it. The Chaser Report. News you can't trust. So according to Crikey anyway, I don't get crediting them because I've done a lot of deep digging on this. You know what would prove them to be incredible Svengali geniuses? What's that? And to be case closed. Is if they had no involvement in the Scott Morrison company at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, here's the thing. What they've done successfully a couple of times is essentially take over a government by having <laughs> one of their major staffers becoming the, the right hand, and it's always a man, yes. of a prime minister. And they did it at the end of 2018. A guy called Yaron Finkelstein, who was the CEO in Australia of Crosby Texter, became Morrison's principal uh, private secretary. So he literally moved from this group into the PMO and ran everything going on. And then, and then at the same time, a guy called David Canzini was Boris Johnson's deputy chief of staff. So they had two PMs basically in their pocket at this point. That would look very good on your annual report, wouldn't it? Would, it? Wouldn't it? I mean, we, we own intelligence agencies. We own PR firms. We own a prime minister. And, in, and pollsters. In both hemispheres. And maybe if you have an intelligence <laughs> firm and you can collect dirt, it's a pretty good way to get prime ministers on your books. I'm not sure. The inception story of AUKUS oh, yeah. is that Scott Morrison, political genius, was just over in Europe, went to look at the French submarines and didn't know what was going on. Mm. And he just suddenly just occurred to him, goodness me, why are we having French submarines when we can have British uh, and American submarines? Yes. It was his great idea. Yeah. On his own. He was he went to a, he went to Biarritz in France and thought, yeah. hang on a moment. Aren't there some other allies that produce nuclear submarines we could go to? Yes. And it was just him on his own. No one else came up with the idea. Guess which industry Crosby Texter had been advising in the United oh, States? No. The submarine industry? The nuclear power industry. Oh. So in the States, they don't really do the kind of Australian and British style political consultancy. They consult to industry. And they had a client over there in the US called General Dynamics. And their subsidiary electric boat, great name. Mm. runs nuclear submarine shipyards. Oh, and at the same time, oh. Boris Johnson wanted to convince everyone in the UK that there was a viable industry for the UK in building nuclear subs and so on. It and worked. so suddenly... So that's why it was so higgledy-piggledy. It made no sense for the UK to be involved in that at all. No, because of course you'd just go to America, right? Yeah, yeah. But instead what we had was <laughs> this whole, well, who will it be? Will it be Britain? Will it be America? Who knows who they're going to pick? And yeah. so the whole thing was dangled because both groups could hold it out as a giant win. And, oh. and, and this is still happening. So 
The AUKUS announcement in March this year, mm. Crikey points out, says that $3 billion from us is going to those US and UK production lines. So you've got Crosby Texter playing all parts of the deal. That's the way to succeed in business, Charles, oh, is have a finger in all parts of the deal. You've got the UK government. They mm. get benefit from it. Boris yes. Johnson looks good. You've got the Australian government, Scott Morrison, looking like he's got this brilliant idea. Mm. And your US client that makes nuclear submarines, cha-ching, yes. they're doing great. Do you think maybe I should sidle up and become Chief of Staff to Emmanuel Mac- Macron? I think you should. And be the French for Instead of Crosby Texter, it'd be like Crosby Texter. You could. Yeah, yeah. You could be their agent in France. That'd be and, Well, they've got a European instead operation. Of, instead of selling submarines, I would sell brie and uh, French wine. Foie gras. Foie gras. We have to buy $368 billion worth of foie gras. <laughs> you should definitely do that. What a great idea. For strategy. That would be how we would win, win France back. Yes. See, what you would do is, I mean, I assume CT Group have already thought about this, is getting France back on board by doing a deal where they get paid on all sides of the equation. Yes. So the point is... That they're clearly very good at what they do. Yes. So it's maybe just the, the question problem is, what do they do? Well, they grease the wheels. They yeah. come up with the message. Yeah. They've, I mean, they were a big part of Tony Abbott's campaign, for instance, when he relentlessly focused in on the message. I mean, he was not a man of great message discipline. No. But as opposition leader, he was absolutely ruthless and very effective. I suspect that the lines he served up, all those mm. three word slogans, you know, mm. axe the tax and all that, yeah. were Crosby Texter. Well, I imagine that Dutton would be looking at the same sheet and going, I might not be able to get out three words, but if you can come up with some two-word slogans, I'm up for it. I mean, he had one word slogan for the no camera. No. No. (laughs) No. No. So in the press today, it's being suggested that because Crosby Texter worked with Yes, the Libs don't want them anymore. So they might be hung out to dry. Oh, cut. That line has been planted by by none other than Mark Texter himself. I guarantee you I will pay you a million dollars if that is not true. We do a marketing deal with, yeah. uh, with my new company. <laughs> so this is the thing. So a lot of Liberal MPs, and this is from Crikey today, and admittedly it is Crikey, I wouldn't want to rely on it too closely, but they reckon they've spoken to a lot of libs off the record who are saying we've got to dump these guys. Uh, yes, I think you should, guys. Yes. Oh, they're such betrayal. And they were so good for the Yes campaign. <laughs> that, is, that is a story... Definitely, 100% planted by Mark Texter to give himself cover and distance. And then the Libs will still do Crosby Texter. It's just a piece of sawdust. Have you learnt nothing from Crosby Texter? <laughs> There's a great quote here from the Oz, of course, the House House Journal of, of all these people. Pretty interesting quote here. I didn't need to see their effort on the Yes campaign. This is someone who believes they're losing their touch within the Libs. I saw their effort on the 2022 election, the 2016 election. They've been wrong more often than they have been right. I can assure you there's no love for Crosby Texter from the leadership team on the right. So I guess we will see. We will see whether Crosby Texter side or back into the Dutton campaign mm. a bit later on. And if they do, mm. maybe the conspiracy theory is worth pondering. The Crosby Texter yeah. came in and went, oh, you should definitely do, don't give any details. Talk no. about the constitutional recognition. That's mm. going to get us, because people are really excited about the Australian constitution. Because I've got a completely different theory for why the no campaign won and why people in Outer western suburbs didn't like it and all the rich people did like it. Oh, yeah. Simply that it's the politics of scarcity. If you fucking can't even cover your fucking rent, why should anyone get anything ever? I mean, that's a big part of the problem, of course. So that's that's it. You think that they should have just tanked the recession? We should have just said to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australia, look, we're a bit short of cash. We can't possibly think about your issues. Sorry, come back to us in a few years. No, I think what it is is we've got to overthrow the billionaire class who take all the money out of the system. So we stop fighting amongst ourselves for once. Well, it's quite possible that Crosby and Texter are billionaires by this point. They've done pretty well. Yeah, that's right. Actually, I'll tell you what, I think Mark Texter would be really good at helping out on our Take Over the Billionaires campaign. He's offered to do it for free. Oh, really? Just yeah. to, add a to give conscience. something back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. good. On. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. Good to have you on board. Our gear is from Road. We are part of the Iconoclast Network. It, I must say, having done that deep dive doesn't make me feel any better about anything. No, it makes. Yeah. I hope they got paid. <laughs> Crosby Texter. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they need the cash. <laughs>